Yeah. Hello, hello, hello. It is your uh, humble friend in the business, Mr. David Duford here. Hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I have a uh, little interview I'm doing with a relatively newer um, insurance agency. I guess it gets called MGA or whatever the terminology is. And uh, Frank is on the line. Say hello, Frank. Frank Brennis. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me, David. Yeah, thank you, Frank. So the reason I got Frank on on the line here is we Fr Frank and I did an interview that maybe about a year ago, give or yeah. take, and we've corresponded through email over the years. And you know, as Frank has grown his agency, it's been kind of interesting to check in every once in a while, kind of compare notes, see how things are going. And Frank reached out to me because uh, it's 2020 December. It's been one of the weirdest years ever, I think, for everybody. Certainly for our business, it's actually been wonderful for me. And we'll find out more for Frank. And uh, to kind of get some insight on what it's been like as a newer agency, recruiting, training, going through the growing pains, dealing with what's going on as far as headwinds in the economy, the everything, right? So uh, Frank is here to kind of give us his background. So why don't we start from the beginning, Frank? Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, your history in insurance sales, and how your agency uh, growth and trajectory has been since it started. Okay, well, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Frank Brennis. I am uh, with Symmetry Financial Group. A little bit about me: I'm a I'm a Nicaraguan immigrant um, and born uh, born in Nicaragua, raised in Burbank, California. So, if you have Jay Leno and all those guys, I've bumped into them actually. So, pretty exciting. Southern California is a really tough market to build. If you haven't noticed, <laughs> it's not a lot of friendly people here. <laughs> They're all moving out of the state. I, yeah, I'm moving out of the state, but I'm staying. I bet here. you're leaving too. <laughs> no, no, of course not. I'm here, man. I'm here to stay. I love it. I love being called an Angelino. <laughs> uh, no, so uh, really quick, you know, uh, my whole dream was to do online advertising t uh, technology and um, you know so one of my first jobs was uh, with a company that was a startup called luxury link uh, it was a really cool travel startup and um, lo and behold you know I went 15 years uh, working in that field close to 20 actually uh, moving on to mobile tech and um, you know I've, I've told my story before on the last but I'll, you know, I'll tell it again uh, I was very simple, you know, I got to a point where I became a vice president, 45 years old, making pretty good money, you know, living kind of the startup life, but not really probably about three or four rounds of funds with these uh, insure tech, um, I'm sorry, these uh, not insure tech, these uh, ad tech companies. And um, I get a call, I'm at my son's birthday, my, my, I guess he'd say my middle child, but it, we're at his birthday and I get a phone call from the president of the company. And he says to me, uh, I'm like, hey, babe, I got to get this call. And I'm thinking, man, this is my break. I'm going to get a huge bonus. Everything's going good, right? So he says, hey, Frank, how you doing? I said, I'm doing great, man. It's my son's birthday. You know, we're, we're enjoying, we're, they're doing like electrical. Everything here is electrical. So you can't have gas cars that you're, <laughs> it's an electrical car, indoor uh, car racing. It's pretty cool. Had a chance to get in there. And uh, he's like, okay, hey, look, I won't take too long. The good news is you get to keep your job. I said, well, you, you just kind of hired me like about six months ago to run the entire division on the publisher side, right? That's so why I'd be bringing in app developers. I'd be getting them the APK kit or the software kit so they can run ads. And I was very good at doing that. I, was, I mean, I had clients all over the world. And um, so he brought me in for that strategy. But literally it was to, I think, looking back now, it was to basically – make the company look more, um, you know, I guess to make it look, how do I say this tangible to sell it? And I didn't know that, you know, like, Hey, we got this guy, you know, he's done this $28 million in his first year, you know, and he's heads a team. So I, I was like, I was thinking it was going to be a bonus. And he said, you know, you get to keep your job, but you know, we're going to have to take pay cuts. I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'm a team player, you know, we're doing good. I mean, what are we looking at? 10, 15, you know, 15,000. And he said, no, 40. I said, wow, that's a big cut. And he goes, no, no, that's your salary. Yeah, yeah, like 40. I'm like, that's my salary? Uh, okay, well, I've been making, you know, over $200,000 as a vice president. It's not a lot of money here in Southern California, but 
to get like payment money, like uh, W2 money. Not bad, right? And uh, man, and I like I, I say this all the time. I did what every great husband would do and not tell his wife. <laughs> So, yeah, they yeah. they can wait till later to know. The yeah, last to know. Spoil yeah. a perfect moment of birthdays, you know. So that see, you're, th- you're thinking about your wife there. It's like I'm just yeah. first Amen. things first, you know. <laughs> Amen. Love her dearly, and you gotta understand, we just purchased the house too in Southern California, and so you know, I mean, it's a nice house. It's a you know, it's it's a nice piece of property. So you know. That night, you know, I was tossing and turning and normally I sleep like a, like a man, I sleep amazing. This night I wasn't sleeping amazing. So she kind of tapped me on the shoulder. She goes, are you going to tell me, you know, what's going on? And, you know, at that point, you know, I, I kind of reached over to her. I said, well, you know, um, I'm going to have to take a pay cut. And she's like, oh my gosh, we just bought the house. <laughs> you know, I said, I understand. And she's like, well, what do you, you know, told her the whole same thing. I said, well, it's, 40 she's like oh okay that's not bad we'll be able to survive I said no that's my new salary (laughs) and uh, like I say in the past I was grateful that she didn't you know immediately knee-jerk reaction and this is when you know you have a partner for life when you know she kind of just was in silent and she said you know what babe you'll find something and uh, she had a lot of confidence in me and that meant the world to me right I mean who at 45 can go out and find out there's not a lot of vice president positions, especially in my field. And, um, you know, that night, you know, we, we said a prayer, we're, we're Christians. We said a prayer together and, you know, and, and, and the big thing is this, like, you know, just because, you know, at the end we win, however, along that road, there's going to be a lot of challenges. And, and that's when I found the first IMO that I was with, um, it came to me with a friend of the family inviting me to some, you know, something, right. And I had literally just been kicked in the proverbial, you know what? So I'm sitting there, I'm listening, I'm looking around, I'm sizing everyone up and I'm going, I think I can really do some good work here. And uh, 11 months went by and I was putting in a lot of work, a lot of effort. I went all in, I won their sword. They have some sword for a first time guy. They have an elite school. That only like it dwindles from from 500 down to 30 down to 15 and actually won that whole dang thing and it was hard i'll tell you but i'm looking at how much hours i was putting into it and i was looking at how much opportunity i was actually out helping people and it wasn't adding up and it wasn't adding up in my bank account that's what really mattered i mean we bought a house in southern california it's no joke so my wife's ticked off we're ticked off and we're fighting every day until, you know, I got online, I started researching, you know, lead-based companies. I said, look, I need to find something that the lead quality is good. There has to, here's one thing I noticed, there has to be somewhat skin in the game for people. Because look, when you ask someone if they want insurance, everybody thinks it's a good idea to have insurance. Everybody. But, but if you ask them, great, let's get you a quote. It's, ooh, no, I'm, I'm okay. I, you know, I don't want to do this. So the thought behind this to you new agents out there is who has skin in the game? If you're looking at a homeowner, especially let's say it's in Tennessee somewhere and they're buying a $250,000 house, they're probably making $45,000, $50,000 a year. They have a family. What would happen if God forbid they were to pass away, right? So the concept of mortgage protection for me was, was a no brainer. I mean, that's for me now. It was just a no brainer. And so when I reached out to Symmetry Financial Group, it took probably a week for them to get back to me. And at that time, I had already made my decision. I was leaving, okay, the practice company. And, you know, a a guy calls me, a gentleman, which I'm blessed to be on his team and, um, you know, mentor, but yeah, we say that word a lot. We throw that around, but this guy is actually doing the business, man. I mean, he is incredibly doing the business and committed. I mean, this guy will out, he's an immigrant. He'll outwork you. Uh, you know, he's one of those guys. The guys just work his way, his bones, you know? And so I went to visit him with my brother. We made the decision. We jumped on and we just started rocket shipping, rocket shipping into past 2020. 
when we hit records and then COVID. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about COVID. What happened? And then COVID. Have you guys seen that uh, viral video? COVID-19! <laughs> <laughs> about everybody's feeling. <laughs> Man. So, I mean, we hit some record numbers. We promoted two agency owners out, and, and life was going good. And then about March time frame, California starts locking everything down. So it's not necessarily COVID. And look, I'm not by any means degrading COVID or saying that it's not. It is a very disgusting virus that's going around right and matter of fact we had some team members actually being impacted from it and also lost family members so it's a real real thing so i take it very very serious with the team but once we were locked down what i thought was amazing was our organization pivoted immediately okay we pivoted to telesales we pivoted to virtual. We actually had an, a, 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 a straight focus. Instead of telling people to go out, pound on the doors, and, you know, they took it serious, you know. And immediately, we were like, wait a minute. Now, we could really be virtual. I mean, literally, people were contacting us now. It's no longer us chasing people, contacting us to do this business and to do it well, you know. And there's a few, there's obviously there's a bunch of changes. However, there's something that you have to understand when you have an organization that's backing you saying, Hey, we're virtual. We can do virtual meetings. We can do zoom meetings. That's awesome. But there is other things involved in doing this business today. That is a little bit different, you know? So David, when you're, you're in face to face with someone, everything's different. It's a different presentation. It's a different pitch, right? It's everything is different. You can use your body. You can use, you know, your tonality. You can use all those things, but now you're confined to a screen, right? And you got kids yelling, right? We got kids, you got dogs coming in that you got to go take care of, right? It's a different dichotomy altogether. So there was a learning curve, but I'll tell you what, you know, looking fast forward to now, um, I've, I've already done better than last year. Okay. And that's amazing. And by the way, with less people, what, what ended up happening is what COVID did most more than anything, it, it really exposed those people that really wanted to do the business that, that didn't want to do the business versus the people that want to do the business and are open to change and want to succeed. You see, I, I didn't, I don't have a choice, David. I, I didn't have a choice to go, well, you know, I, I got a rich dad. You know, I don't have that choice. I mean, we're immigrants, you know, we don't have that choice. So the only choice I had was to figure this darn thing out and to be better at follow up, follow through and asking questions. Okay. So a couple of questions on that. I'm curious because in final expense, we don't do Zoom at all yeah you're thinking mildred's gonna get on facetime or zoom is just uh you know certain doom but obviously not the case with you know middle-aged people who are sure. buying mortgage protection what's what's been kind of the biggest give us an overview of kind of how the virtual zoom based mm -hmm. sale is different from telesales and you kind of touch it a little bit and how has the experience been for agents to acclimate to that so first and foremost, it, it, you know how there's a big emphasis in, in building rapport, right? But I think what takes a little bit of backseat from that is credibility. You got to come across as being this person of, hi, my name is Frank Brennis. Uh, before we get started, my license number, and you show them your license number is 0M14655. I'm licensed to solicit life and health insurance. So we, before we get started, the good news is you have your script up. So you're 100% professional in that. You could build rapport along the way, but it's not a requirement. You remember like the, the sales technique, go directly to the kitchen table and yeah. you see a USC poster. Hey, by the way, I went to USC too. Not you, something that's irrelevant right now is you're finding people that really want to buy. Okay. You're finding buyers. And what you're doing is you're sharing that time with them. And then you're going very, very Per, um, very professional and very assumptive in the actual close. 
okay? And then you have tools available, especially if they're in their 50s, even in their 60s, or you know how you use email. And they're going to be signing, you know, versus email, uh, via email. And that's it. Now, with final expense, I have done some final expense. And yes, but you now you have to position yourself with the right carriers that allow for, for telesales, right? America is an, an amazing one. Uh, you have Royal Neighbors. They have an amazing product that you can do that. And it's all uh, voice, voice uh, also. So um, it, again, uh, some carriers are better than others. And uh, if you know, um, this industry, I would say is because of COVID, it's a lot better, but it's still about five years behind, you know, coming from tech myself, to, <laughs> it's like it's probably five to eight years behind. Are most of your agents out of California? But as, if we yes. look at a percentage, how many are, are West Coast based? I would say all my agents are out of California. Okay. We used to have a sprinkle in Florida, and uh, but that kind of that kind of went away. You know, that's one thing with COVID. It, like I said, it'll it'll you know it'll you'll sift and you'll you'll get the the cream will rise at the top. And those people that stayed around, you know, we we do a lot of what you know. It's a, the blessing behind all this is that we get a chance to meet virtually every day and have dial uh, we have dial clinics every day so you're actually you're actually seeing your your agents dial you're critiquing right. them after the dial and then you're cheering them on so it's not this isolation kind of well it is but it isn't you know yeah you're retaining some of that importance of the culture and community now i question that are all of your agents now zoom based I would say um, 70% to 30. Um, So here's, so here's, let's say I do, I bring in 20 applications in one month. Um, I would say if there's a hiccup during the zoom, there's always an opportunity. You know, you have your COVID gear on, I I have gloves, I have spray and the whole kit and caboodle. But what I will do is get down to that, to that last part and if they're having technical difficulties, they'll yeah. say, hey, by the way, I'll be in your area. And that's why it's very important to do this as a very local business. A lot of people say, hey, Zoom, you can do this in Nebraska. But if something like that happens, you can't drive out to Nebraska and say, oh, by the way, I'm here in your area. Here's my tablet. Go ahead and sign that. You know what I mean? So there's, you have to have a plan B with that. Because people are still working. A lot of them are working from home, too. So that you now have to be more creative. I spent two hours on this 68 year old lady. Okay. Walking through the, uh, well, I won't name the carrier. They were doing an email, email signature. Okay. Two hours. And I couldn't go, please jump on a video so I could show you. I had to literally go, okay, yeah. ma'am. So this is where professionality takes place. Is it ma'am? What I want you to do is I want you to read to me what it's saying exactly. So then me knowing, you know, the process, I can kind of figure out where she's at. And then at that place, I, it's not, it's not working. So then I would say, okay, ma'am. So do you have an Android device like Samsung or do you have an iPhone? Because some of these darn devices are, are blocking pop-ups and a lot of the e-app stuff blocks pop-ups. So these are some intricacies that you, it, it takes experience. And then you say, ma'am, the, the three right dots there, go ahead and click that for me. Oh, yeah, I see. Okay, click it. Now it says allow. Okay, go ahead and allow. And now close that out. Now you should see the screen. You should see the check mark. It's highlighted. So what I want you to do is read that over. Go ahead and read it to me. Okay, go ahead and click that. <laughs> two hours, brother. It's okay. It was a great. We helped them out. We helped her out. But two hours. But you got to expect that. You're earning you a commission expect- on those two hours. Those you got to expect that, brother. So one thing that I think is important to emphasize here is how COVID has affected the insurance business. There are people right now watching this who have lost their jobs, who fear that they're going to lose their jobs. Maybe they had a small business that was shut down against their will that they couldn't do anything about. And and they've lived through it at this time period where their perception is, is that this, this, circumstance that we're in is not has not been good for business but that isn't the case for yourself nor has it been with with me why why is it that there are not just us two but multitudes of insurance agencies and agents too 
selling different products, doing well, despite all that's happening with COVID. What, what are your thoughts on that? Well, if, if you're asking me from an industry insider point of view, um, I think the personality it takes to do this type of living that we're doing, I mean, it, it takes an entrepreneur. You know, you're taking someone that looks at risk and go, wow, I can turn this risk into this huge opportunity. So that's an, that's an eight in us already, you understand? But if you're talking about someone who lost their job, who's had their nine to five, who was making, hey, I was one of those guys who was making that good money. Um, it, it's hard to start up and start a business again, right? It, it just, you've never done it, you, you know? But I have a quote, I have a, a quote on my team. I said, Did, have you hit your no quota? Have you gotten rejected enough? Have you been told, you know, go to heck a hundred times over? If you haven't, you're not doing your job yet. And not a lot of people can do that. Now, the ones that can, so let's say maybe the, the car dealers, the sales, the salespeople that sell cars, the real estate agents, the people that deal with that every day. Hey, let me tell you, if you just get in the habit or if you just believe a little bit in yourself, okay, and you want to make an amazing amount of money, the time to do it is now. This is the toughest it's going to get. Okay. But, but that's, is, I guess that's, I don't mean to interrupt you, but that, this again, I'm trying to think of what my audience is thinking is sure, sure. This is what all, sure. we all say this, right? I mean, insurance is the best opportunity. I think it really is. But the, it, the different thing right now is that COVID has devastated business. Why hasn't it devastated ours? I mean, sure, entrepreneurs and all that, of course. That's well, the, 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 the factor that, that death is right, at, right in front of you, Okay. So people will want more, but then there's a fear of job loss, right? I'm losing my job. I can't really do this right now. I, you, as, as, as a trained agent, you should say, I 100% completely understand that, ma'am. But let me ask you something. Right now, you've told me you had no coverage whatsoever. What if, God forbid, God forbid now, you were to get this virus and it didn't look good for you? Are you sure you want to leave your family? in that situation. And that's the, that's the reality of the sobering approach to this. Now you mentioned something that you said, you know, your agents are listening to this and you have agents from all walk of, walks of life. I'm going to tell you the biggest lie in America is, is that there is job security. That's the biggest lie. You want real job security. You got to create your own economy. How do you create your own economy? I don't have to reinvent the wheel here. I just got to buy more leads. I got to make more calls and I got to be more efficient and I got to get used to being told no. I got to get used to that. And if you can do that, you can make a crap load of money here. It's that simple. There is no candy coating that, uh, Mr. Duford. There's no candy coating that no matter what you and I say, that's the harsh reality of this business. Some of us will rise to the occasion. Others will make excuses because Oh my God, there's COVID. I can't make money now. But think of this. Would you be okay as a person to look at your family and say the same thing? Well, you know, it's COVID. I can't make a living for you. That's the kind of people I look for. I look for people that are going to go. I see this as a, as I would rather have $1 earned on my personal pen, my own economy than have begged someone for money of telling them how much I'm worth at a job, okay? And so those are the people that I'm looking to work with. And, and let's face this, you know this. I mean, you know these stats better than I do. The average insurance agent will be blown out in less than 18 months. They're gone. Zippo, okay? So you... To answer your question, I, I those are the, those are the facts. Those are the that's the stats. You know, the, the the I think the thing for any newer agents that are looking at this as a business opportunity but skeptical because of COVID, you you hit on it one hundred percent. It's a it's a strange thing that's going on. You see, insurance is something that is not readily sought after, like a new truck, a new house new stuff, right? People don't dream of owning a burial insurance policy or mortgage protection. Okay. <laughs> it's like the last thing someone wants to buy. Right. Until everything changes. And when you are displayed death and uh, despair, 
and a constant reminder that there is a pandemic that's going to get you, it is only natural to think about dying and then the tangential things around it like, what if I die without coverage? What if I die like your clients and we can't make the mortgage payment? We've got to be out in the street. What if we you know, lose our equity and all, all of this stuff, our home? And, yeah, and that's a really, it, it's, again, everybody knows they need life insurance, but they, very few people willingly go get it in, in this environment. It's made every single person in the face of the planet and in America think twice about this. And well, now we all have not I'm sorry, go ahead. Let's come to grips with mortality, man. I mean, yeah. not, this is borrowed time. You know, just, like, let's be honest with each other. I had my first claim Well, the, my brother, Stefan Brennis. He had his first claim, okay? He was, he's logging into a carrier, Gerber, and he sees a claim and he's like, he gives me a call. He said, Hey Frank, I think uh, one of my clients passed away. I said, what? So then he gets on, he calls the carrier and he was, he's brilliant. Cause he sells multiple policies. He's brilliant. And at first I was like, well, do you really want to, but now think about it. The loved one called this certain, uh, uh, this carrier that was out. They, they knew that she had it. Okay. But she didn't know, or the, the, the gentleman didn't know that she had another policy. And it was with my, with my brother. It was, a, it was a Forrester's policy, okay? And literally, you know, you know this. You've done this 100 times. You sell the couple, uh, a couple policies. Then the, one of the couple says, well, it's really expensive. I don't know. And it was like 70, 80 bucks, whatever it was. And, and I don't know everybody's circumstances, but... The beautiful thing that my brother did was he pushed back and he said, sir, life happens. God forbid something were to happen to you or your wife. How does that look for you? And lo and behold, 12 months to the day, he canceled his policy and his wife at 48 had a massive heart attack, a massive heart attack, dead. My brother calls him. So um, hello, Mr. Such and such. Let's say John. Hello, John. Um, you know, I'm I'm very sorry to hear what happened with your wife. My name is Stefan. I'm the agent that you met. And go, oh yeah, yeah. And then, and then he said, um, so I'm happy to inform you that you have your wife left you another policy, okay? And it was for this amount. He literally started crying. He recorded the call. The guy literally started crying. Like, thank you. We need it so bad right now. Time. I'm unemployed. Time is bad. So my brother was like, you, you think that guy's not going to call him and just renew that policy that lapsed on him? I mean, this is why we do this business. Do we make good money? Absolutely, we can make great money here. But at the end of the day, if I walk out of that home or if I'm in front of that client and I can't help them, I didn't do my job. I didn't do my job. It's interesting, you know, when you're in this business long enough as an agent, you realize you're, you're told this about how important what you do is. And it makes sense logically. But then you go through the experience of yeah. seeing somebody you met, you talked to, that you helped, that you had a good time with, and they're dead. And you were the only person between that point and the present day when their claim was filed that helped them out with this exact thing they needed nobody else would have came in there most likely to help them right and my point being is that you really matter as an agent and and you really make a difference in your client's life and and it makes i think you raise a level of awareness and even just in your overall ability in this business when you lose a client it usually happens in the first year year and a half right but it, it, everything clicks it's like wow this is this is good work that we do and it's important um Real quick, quick, as we wrap this up, I know you've got something come up here in a few minutes. What would you, again, thinking of the newer agents that are watching this, what kind of advice would you be giving these agents that are thinking about this business, COVID and everything's happening? What type of advice would you give them as far as joining this industry with us? I think it's the best industry ever. I, that's, that's my advice. You got to jump in. And like I said, there's no such thing as job security. There's no, and then what better place to go out and actually make an impact on lives after seeing and hearing that firsthand, 
I mean, I'll tell you what, everything, like you said, clicks together. And I would say if you're looking at this, you got to really look at this as an investment of your time. You're going to probably, your first year, you're probably not going to make a lot of money. But understand it's insurance, you know. And every single year that goes by that you keep adding starts compounding. And then if you start recruiting and if you have that model where you have an agency, you can really do very well here. Very few places that you could just do that with a high school to uh, high school diploma. Very few places. Matter of fact, I have a son who's on a who's on a mission, and um, he uh, tells me, "Dad, as soon as I get home, I want to do this 100%." And I mean, he's uh, gonna be 20 years old now. So, what I would say to you guys, it's it's not gonna be easy. You're gonna get rejected, but you can't start your journey until you pick up that darn phone and set that appointment. And once you do, you do it so many dang times that you become proficient at it. And then once you become proficient at it and you're meeting with, it's going to, you know, it's going to be awkward. You're going to be meeting with these people. You're going to be meeting via phone or depends on your state. Right. And eventually it's going to become just like you riding a bike and pretty soon you're going to be very good at it. Sometimes it takes years. Sometimes it takes months, but you're going to get very good at it that it's going to become second nature for you. But that process takes place with you dedicating yourself and going all in. Don't be jumping around IMO to IMO to IMO. It's not good. Stick to where you're at. Learn the craft. And when you're ready, and and when I say learn the craft, learn the lead-based business craft. You know, you don't want to go to somewhere where friends, family, and you know what? That's hard. Can't, you can't do that well. Let's be honest. It's a business. The lifeblood of business is customers and leads, getting in front of them. It's going to be darn hard, but you know what? It's going to be worth it, man. I remember I made 24 bucks my first commission. I'm like, yes, $24 that I made myself. This is me. I made it. That was exciting. So I think I said a little too much, but that's how I feel. And said what needed to be said. So Frank, tell us, uh, first of all, thank you for being here. Tell us where people would like to learn more about your agency can find out uh, about yeah absolutely uh simply go to um i'll I'll give you two websites the first website you have to put https because it's secure and then hit frank.earnwithsymmetry.com or you can go with symmetryincome.net symmetryincome.net and um if you want to you know if you want to go along for the ride with me i'd love to have you and all i ask of you is 100 percent dedication and work that's how i play so i'll put the links send me the links i'll put them in the video below so people if you're watching this look below the video look for the description box you'll see the links very close to the top so that will connect you with frank other than that, Frank, thanks for your time. Nice to talk to you again, man. And uh, hope you awesome. have a good uh, end of the year coming up. It's still going great. And as always, thank you for mentoring people. It's it's awesome. Guys, you got to listen to this gentleman. He, I don't give him anything. He doesn't give me I don't, nothing. It's just he wants to learn about people that are really actually doing this business and are successful at it. And that is worth its weight in gold. That's, that's awesome. I want to thank you for that, David. All right. Thank you so much for your time. All right, right, man. Bye, Frank. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye.